Amen. I'm going to preach to you this morning from Psalms 40, verses 1 through 3. And again, we want to say we appreciate every one of you that's with us this morning. Amen. We still have several out, but we're glad that you're here. Amen. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined it to me, and he heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit. Everybody say, he brought me out of a pit. See, this thing right here is called a pulpit. Because we try to pull you from the pit. I don't know if you've ever related that to that or not, but th th that's, that's what preaching is all about. We're trying to pull you from the pit that you're in, regardless who you are. Amen. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established, if I say established, established my going. And verse 3 says, And he put a new song in my mouth. Aren't you glad for a new song? Amen. Even praise unto our God, many shall see it. See, whenever God brings you up out of that pit and, and God puts a new song in your mouth, amen, everybody's going to see that. But it says, many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Amen. The title of my message today is The Process from Pit to Praise. From pit to praise. Amen. The comparison of sin to the Mari clay. And we find here, first of all, that the Bible compares sin to the Mari clay. Psalm 69, verses 1 and 2. Save me, O God, from the water, for the waters are come unto me, or my soul. I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. I am come uh, into deep waters where the floods overflow me. And verse 14 of the same chapter is, Deliver me out of, out of the mire and let me not sink. Let me be delivered from them that hate me and out of the deep waters. Amen. See, mire clay is like a thick mud likened into a quicksand. Amen. Have, Anybody ever saw a movie where, uh, you know, the, 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 the cowboy was out on the prairie and all of a sudden he ended up in quicksand. And, and the, the more he tried to fight to get out of it, the deeper he sunk into that mire. Amen. So uh, deliver me. Every one of us have been stuck into the quicksand of sin. Three ways I believe that the mire represents sin. Number one, the more you struggle to pull yourself out, The more you struggle to pull yourself out, the more you're going to sink. See, there comes a time that we've just got to say, God, amen, I'm here, I'm stuck, I can't get out, amen, I need your help. I can't do it by myself. Amen. Number two, the mar, the mar will eventually pull you to the bottom. Number three, the only way out of it is for somebody or someone to pull you out of it. Amen. Things that David did, he patiently waited. I said patiently. See, this is the right kind of waiting. He patiently, patiently waited. Amen. Too often what we call waiting is filled with fearful impatience. Impatience. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 42, 43, and 44. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Mount uh, to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees, and said to his servant, "Go up now towards look towards the sea." And he went up and he looked and he said, "There's nothing. I don't see nothing." Amen. He looked and said, "There's nothing." And he said, "Go again seven times." 
And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. <laughs> and he said, Go up again, Ahab. Prepare thy chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. He cried to the Lord. When you're in the midst of your pit, you need to learn how to cry unto the Lord. Because there's nobody else going to help you. Nobody else is going to pull you out. Nobody else can reach down and, and bring you to the place that God wants you to be except for God himself. Amen. He cried to the Lord. David chose to use his words and express his heart directly to God. How often when we are frustrated or in trouble do we express our emotion and feelings with everyone else except God. We like to moan and complain and groan and complain and, and uh, we like to talk about it, but, but rarely or, or the last resort we go to God. Amen. Second Corinthians 7 and 10. For godly sorrow worketh repentance, not because you got caught, but godly sorrow. That means that, God, I am sorry. I am truly sorry for what I've done. Amen. It's not that I've been caught in adultery, not that I've been caught uh, stealing, it's not that I've caught doing this or that, but godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repeated of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Amen. He got a new testimony. But at the end of David's waiting, God proved faithful in rescuing him, strengthening him, and anchoring him even more deeply in the place to trust in the Lord. Amen. Things that God did for David. Now, I want you to look at these just for a moment. He inclined to him. Can you picture the father of the universe leaning over towards David, listening and then responding He's a good father which desires to help his children. Sometimes what we most need uh, to happen requires his work in a lot of people and places in addition to what he needs to do in you and I. He lifted him up. David was in a pit. If I say pit, David was in a pit, so to speak, even before there, amen, ever been, ever, yeah, have you ever been there? I have been there. I've been where I looked to the right and to the left and to the front and to the back and there was no help. Amen. I felt like I was sinking. I felt like that there was no rescue in me. I felt like that there was a desperation in my life. Amen. And, and there was nobody, 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 nobody that could help me. Nobody. But in the midst of that, God, he's a good father who desires to help his children. He lifted him up. David was in a pit. Amen. David trusted and waited until God let down the rope. Know what I mean? I said he trusted God until God let down the rope for him. Amen. See, you may feel that way today. You may feel like you're stuck in a pit. Not even sure if anybody, including God, knows where you are or even cares where you are. See, I've been to the place where I felt like that God had deserted me. That there was no hope in my life because God had abandoned me. I know I'm the only one that's ever felt that. No, I'm not. I, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I know that you've all been there. Amen. I said, I know that you've all been there. Amen. You may feel that way today, stuck in a pit, waiting on the rope. You see, if a legalist came by and saw a sinner in a pit, he would preach a sermon about the dangers of the pit. Well, I'm so sorry you're there, but let, let me tell you something. You know, the reason you're there is because of this, and the reason you're there because you did that, and because the legalist, the religionist, 
came by and saw that same sinner in the pit, he would take, uh, talk about steps that the sinner could uh, take to help himself out of that pit and avoid other pits in his life. Now from now on, once you get out of this pit, amen, you need to straighten up and you need to do this and you need to do that. If a pessimist walked by, he would tell that sinner that he was going to die in that pit. Aren't you glad that God reached down and lifted you out of that pit? Aren't you glad that, amen, you were dead and you were dying and, and th th there was nowhere to turn and, and you thought that you breathed your last breath and you thought that the world was coming to an end and in the midst of all of that, God reached down and said, I'm going to pick you up, my friend, and I'm going to set you on that rock today. Amen. If the op optimist passed by, he would tell the sinner that, uh, well, I I've seen worse pits than this. If a realist walked by, he would tell the man just to accept his pit. You're there, just accept it. Amen. There's nothing you can do about it. Just accept it. Amen. But if Jesus came by, ah, come on, somebody got to hear me now. But I said, but if Jesus came by, amen, he would get into that pit with the sinner and he would lift him up. Amen. Can I tell somebody that Jesus is walking up and down these aisles and it doesn't matter the pit that you find yourself in. Amen. God will reach down and he'll, he'll jump in there with you because he loves and he cares for you. Amen. That is just what Jesus did for uh, each of us. He robed himself in human flesh. He entered into the pit of this world, and he died for you and I upon the cross of Calvary. Amen. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 9. Amen. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, whom, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Amen. When you call on the name of Jesus, Amen. All devils hear it. Amen. And they have to step aside. Amen. When you come to him in the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All enemies. Amen. Have to surrender to that name of Jesus Christ. Like the song says. Now look, he brought me, brought me up. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my uh, despairing cry from the water lifted me. Now safe am I. Set me down. Isn't it grand to know that God doesn't stop when he gets us out of the pit? but that he also sets our feet upon a rock to stay. And that great place, amen, to be when you have spent a, a lot of time in the Mary clay. Our rock is Christ Jesus. He has seated us in Christ. He is the unshakable foundation of our very lives of our believers. Amen. Psalms 89 and 26 says, he shall cry unto him, Thou art my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Psalms 95 says, O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise unto the rock of our salvation. See, he established his step. See, this is a picture of God guiding and and and, and uh, making out the path for you and I. There in itself may well keep us out of many a pit. Not all of them, for sometimes, like Joseph, others may toss us in the pit. 
Yeah, somebody threw him in a pit. Was in his own doing. God established our steps. He controls our destiny as we place ourselves in his hands. What a treasured reassurance. He established me. He founded me with faith. He grounded me with grace. He settled me with the scripture. He put a new song in my mouth. Amen. When I was down and out, he put a new song there. Amen. When I couldn't lift my head above, amen, towards the heavens, he put a new song there. Amen. That I was able to lift my head up high and sing unto him. Amen. Oh, my God is such a great God. How great thou art. How great thou art. See, this is a picture of God guiding us. Amen. He put a new song in my mouth. This must have been a song of deliverance. I wonder what it would sound like today. Can you think of a song of testimony that tells you how God has rescued someone? Anybody, anybody here been rescued? Anybody here been in the pit? And God reached down and said... I'm going to lift you out of that pit. Amen. Whether you've been on drugs or alcohol or, or pornography or whatever it is, God has brought you out of that pit and he has set your feet on a rock. Amen. That he's going to stand with you as long as you stand with him. Amen. Can you think of the song of testimony that God tells of how God has rescued somebody? God loves the praises that proceed from our singing the story of his love expressed to us. the mouth can sing because the heart has been helped when the psalmist began David was not talking about singing uh, but about crying why didn't preach long at all isn't that unusual I'm not done yet but I'm almost there Amen. He created a testimony to bring in others. I, I'll never forget Winston, Brother Winston over there, because I used to smoke two and a half packs of Winston's a day. So when he came up, came up and I said, uh, not Marlboro, it's Winston, right? And he said, yeah, it's Winston. God has rescued us. Some of us have been down deep. Some of us didn't know which way to turn and didn't know if there was any hope for you and I. But, amen, in the midst of that, God says, I'm going to set you free. I'm going to rest you. Well, there's no, help, no hope for my marriage. Amen. Well, some of it, he has rescued our marriage. There's no help for my children. Well, God's going to help our children. Amen. He created a testimony to bring in others. Christ is glorified when we share our stories with others. He used it through the power of the Holy Ghost to bring forth the praises of others. So your testimony is one of the most powerful things that you can share with people to open their hearts to the Lord. Yeah. And we can argue doctrine with them and, and they'll sit down and and they'll say, well, you know, I believe this. And you say, well, I, I, I believe this because the Scripture says this. And they say, well, the Scripture says that. And, and we, can, we can argue that. We can go back and forth. Amen. But the strongest thing there is, now the Word of God is strong and powerful. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But when you tell somebody the, the, the testimony that God has done in my life and in your life, See, there's no denying that. Some of you were drug addicts, and some of you sold drugs, and some of you were alcoholics, and, and God has rescued you. God has saved you from all of that stuff. So you have a testimony. You say, well, I, I don't know enough about the Word in order to... Well, you don't have to. All you got to do is share with them your testimony. I was once blind, but now I see. I was once lost, but now I'm found. Amen. Thank God for the amazing grace of God. Amen. Because if it had not been for the amazing grace, 
I would still be lost or six foot under or whatever or in prison. I don't know where I would be, but I know I wouldn't be here. Kevin Gates, Hell's Flame, working at the high school. She, she helped us just more than anybody there. She, began it. she helped us. And by doing that, she looked for us. We couldn't find us for a couple of weeks. And then she's been a part of us ever since. This lady. All right, we'll give her a hand. God is such an awesome. I'm going to finish this and uh, play something. You need to get ready to play. I told you I was like that. Amen. He used it through the power of the Holy Ghost. Your testimony is the most powerful thing. Telling the story of how Jesus' life and love changed them, moves their heart towards Him. Thank you.